In the last session, we looked at the current carrying conductors, we looked at magnetic fields surrounding them, and we looked at what would happen if we formed a coil of wire. If you remember, we get a magnetic field lines that are pushed through. We get a north on the one side and a south. So we've created an electromagnet. Okay. Well, firstly, this coil that we speak of has got a name. And we generally call it, and you'll hear it very often, you'll hear it called a solenoid. Okay? Just basically the coils of, of um, wire that go around the, um, let's say, this. Obviously, in many cases, we're going to have something inside there, but we'll get to that, where we actually have a piece of steel inside there, and we create an even stronger magnet, right? Now... solenoid. What would happen? Okay. Remember we had here, we had a coil, a solenoid wrapped around this, right? And we had a current flowing in it, right? If you remember, we had the following. We had a solenoid with a, a current. Gave us a magnetic field, didn't it? So we had the coil, we connected it up to a battery so that the current would flow, and that gave us a magnetic field. Now the question then arises is, well, what happens if we have, this is case one, let's look at case two. Let's take, we've still got the same old solenoid, okay, we don't have a current, but we have a magnetic field. That's a different situation, isn't it? We've got this, but now we don't connect it to a battery anymore. In other words, we don't have a current in here. But we, instead, we bring a magnet. Let's say this is a magnet. We bring a magnet into this. So we now introduce a magnetic field into this situation. As opposed to where we had it creating a magnetic field, we've now got the magnet. Now what happens? Well, what do we find? We find that exactly the same, but the opposite. We had a solenoid with a current. We ended up with a magnetic field. Now if we've got a solenoid with a magnetic field, yep, we end up with a a current. So the magnetic field has actually, and here's a word, it has induced a current. Okay. So, yes, we've made electricity. Simple as it seems. Because as we bring the magnet towards this, right, we create a current flowing in this loop. As we take the magnet out of here, we get the current flowing the opposite way. We're going to go into that now in a minute and see why. But can you see what's happened is we've done exactly the opposite. Now, this whole process is Faraday's law. And let me just read Faraday's law to you. Faraday's law states that if you change the magnetic field in the vicinity of a conductor, a potential difference is set up in the conductor. If there is a closed circuit, a current will flow, and the current is called the induced current. Okay. Now, what does it say? Let's read it again. It says if you change the magnetic field in the vicinity of a conductor, okay, a potential difference is set up, and if it's closed, there's a current flowing, and it's called the induced current. Okay. Well, that's exactly what we've just said. Okay. If you change, bring a magnetic field close to this solenoid, we start to create a current in that field. Because if it's a closed loop, 
the current can flow. Okay. So there's a thing here is the change in magnetic field. Okay. So if we connect up, if we connect up to our to our um, coil, let's say we've got it going up like that, going down there, and on this side here, we now we connect across here, we connect our ammeter, right? The ammeter is counting electrons, essentially, it's counting the current, isn't it? Okay, That's what it's designed to do. So it sits there and it waits to see if any electrons go past. Then what we find is as the magnet magnet is approaching we get a reading on the current okay if the magnet is moved away the current changes direction okay so a changing magnetic field results in a current right so the question is now well what else happens well the faster the magnet approaches and cuts the uh, uh, conducting wires here, the greater the current. So there's a couple of little things that come out of this. The first of all is, um, let's say speed of changing magnetic field. What does that actually mean if we try and visualize it? What it's saying is it's saying we've got a wire, okay, and it's, there's a magnet here, it's the speed at which this is cutting through those magnetic lines, isn't it? It's the speed with which we're cutting it. Just because we're moving the magnet, it's the same as if we move the wire, right? So the moving magnet, the faster the magnet moves, the greater the current, okay? We also notice that the more coils that we have, and we get So if we change the magnetic field, right, faster, we get more current. If we have more coils, we get more current, okay? And the last one is obviously, it's linked to the magnets themselves, okay? Magnetic field strength. Right. Obviously, the, the stronger the magnet, if this is a very strong magnet, right, and I'm moving it in, it's going to have an effect on the current itself. So those are the issues that are having an effect on the current, right? Is the speed that we change it, that's how fast that the conductor is cutting through the magnetic uh, flux lines, the, um, the number of coils, and the magnetic field strength itself. Those are the things that are influencing the current that we're going to be seeing into this um, in this uh, solenoid of ours. Okay. Let us now say we say okay. All right. Let's just have a look at this issue here. Is because what what actually happens is the current changes direction. Okay. Now we need to ask ourselves, but why why would it do that? Well. There's an element that you could think that, that logically it would. Because if you push it in, you create the current going in one direction. If you then remove the magnet, why would the current be going in the same direction? It wouldn't. You're doing the opposite thing. And what is Newton's law is to every action is an equal and opposite reaction. Fundamentally, that's what we're saying here. We've inserted the, the magnet in to the solenoid. In other words, we've cut the the wires now we are going in reverse right so you would expect the reaction to be the opposite current that is exactly what happens right and in this process we need to look at Lenz's law okay what we need to know is we need to know what does it say it says here the law states that the direction of the induced current Okay. okay, is such that it resists the cause of the current. This is because the induced current has its own magnetic field. 
and the induced field opposes the changing field that causes the current to be induced. My goodness, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Okay. Well, let's, let's break it down into bits. It says, first of all, the law states that the direction of the induced current resists the cause of the current. What it's saying is that if we take our magnet into the solenoid and we are pushing it in there, now, we, now the magnetic lines are cutting through the conductors, thus creating a field. But what it does, remember, is it's going to create a field. What have we done? We've, let's say, we've brought the north pole of a magnet, and let's say here's our conductor over here, for example. There's our coil, our solenoid. We brought a north pole. Now, we know that that induces a current. We can see it, all right, on the ammeter, remember? But what do we say? We say, hold on, putting that in there, that current itself, when it gets induced, it induces a magnetic field of its own, doesn't it? Remember? Current flowing induces a magnetic field. So it induces a north pole over there. So the current direction is such to induce a north pole at that point, which means a south pole there, which means we've got our north is there, right? Because that's trying to stop the magnet. All right? There's no free lunch. So when it's pushed in, the current goes the opposite way to try and stop the magnet from creating that current. Okay? So if we've now got a north pole there, right, we would then say, let's go back to our solenoid that we had before, shall we? And let's just see. Remember, we had going in, out, in, out like that, just like so, right? We said coming out is going to be doing this, going in is going to be doing that, so it's reinforcing in that direction, so north is there. So if we just translate that one there, right, depending upon how you're viewing this in 3D, right, you can see, we would say, right, let us say that this coil, this coil here is in the front, okay, that coil is going down the back, okay, so the front is coming, there, let's say, and that's there. So what have we done? If we've got a north pole, the current must be coming up at that point, correct? So if this is in the front there, that's that wire, means my current must be coming up and going down on the other side, which is creating a north pole, which is trying to stop the, cre the, the creation of this induced current. Ditto. Before we look at the other one, let's have a look here. Okay. If I bring a south pole, okay, that was a pretty awful one, wasn't it? Okay. Let's just try and redraw that a little bit neater. Okay, down and out. Okay. If we bring a south pole over here, this creates a south pole over here. And we know that we then get our north pole that side. We would then go back to our drawing and we say, right, how do I have a south pole there? Instead of coming over here, instead of going out, I'll be going in, won't I? We'll be changing the direction of the current. It'll then start coming out on that side, right? So this has actually, you can see, I'm just going to draw it over there, this has changed the direction of the current because it's induced a south pole at that point. It's doing this because of Newton's law. To every action is an equal and opposite. If you're creating a north, the action is to create a north equal and opposite, right? If you're creating a south, that's the situation. Okay? Now, let us say that we've now got our Let's put the magnet inside the coil now. Like so. This is at the front. And this is at the back. Okay. Don't be too concerned about whether you can see the 3D here or not. It's not relevant. It's the principle of what's happening here. When we do some of the examples later, 
you'll see how to do it, right? It's not, it's not that you're seeing it in 3D at this point in time. That's not critical at all. Let's say we've now got our bar magnet inside. There. Okay? North and south. Now we want to remove the bar magnet, right? What do you think this coil does? It does exactly the opposite. It says, no, I don't want you to remove it now. It's inside the, inside the, 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 the solenoid, so I'm going to resist whatever you do. So if I'm going to move out my south pole over there, all right, what am I going to do? I'm going to try and stop you. So I'm going to be creating okay, a north and a south pole there, aren't I? We're going to create... We're going to create over here the north and the south pole, aren't we? Okay, because I'm inside it. Okay, I don't want to. I want to keep it attracted. So, as I move it out of the the field, I, so I'm going to start once again generating a current, aren't I? What am I doing? As it moves in, let's take it through three steps. As it, my magnet comes in, there's a north, let's say this is the north end here, therefore I've got a north end there. These two, okay, are going to create north-north to try and stop. It goes in, right? The current is generated as it moves into the, into the solenoid. Then I want to move it out, it says, no, 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 please stay, Try tries to keep me. No, I can't, I'm cutting again. So essentially, the current is doing this, isn't it? The current is moving like this. If I looked at the ammeter, the first ammeter, as it approached, I would register, just hypothetically, 2 amps, right? When my current is, or when my magnet has stopped, I register 0 amps, and when I pull it out, I register 2 amps that way, right? I haven't made that directional. So what have we done is we've, We've got a situation where current's that way, zero, current's now that way. It's in the opposite direction. That's the principle that we're saying with Lenz's law, where as you put it in, it'll seek to do the opposite, just to tend to keep you there or try and stop you from doing it. But in any of that is creating a current into this, in this solenoid, right? So now we've had two situations. The first one, is we have used a current to generate a magnet. The second situation is we've used a magnet to generate a current. Okay? Now you can see obviously that this is going to play a role in the whole electrodynamics, isn't it? Because what are we going to be doing? Well, let's think about a situation where we've got a battery and a coil and we connect the battery up to the coil and that then creates an electromagnet which can do, it can function, it can do work, right? We've seen it with that. Um, we could also see it, for example, um, when you switch on a car. You charge through the coil, right, which sends the starter motor, which starts the car, right? So that's that. But now what about the opposite? Well, think of it this way. Um, you may have seen in, 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 in a lot of the older movies where somebody uses a telephone and they actually wind it, right? What they're doing there is they're winding a coil through magnets to generate electricity, okay? Essentially, what are we doing? We've created a generator. A dynamo is the same sort of thing. It generates electricity. It, what is it? It's a set of coils moving through a magnetic field or a set of magnets moving around through conductors. And you'd have noticed with a dynamo, some of you may have them on, uh, on bicycles, as you are pedaling, the faster you go, the brighter your, your, your lights get. As you slow down, so it dims until you've got no light when you stop. That is the current that is flowing as these coils or magnets are interacting with each other. Because that's what's going on inside there. <clears throat> so the one, we've got a generator where we're generating electricity. The other one, we've got a situation where essentially we've got power. We're then using that power, so that would be like a motor, for example, right? We power it up, and then we can use it. 
Okay. What I want to do next is I want to look at, at magnetic fields. And how do we measure them and what's the terminology? You, you may have heard of uh, uh, things like Teslas and things like that. Um, that's the, 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 the electric car, I believe, that, that's being made as well. I think it's called a Tesla. We're going to be looking at those issues. Now, it does get a little bit complicated with the whole angle story, but just we'll try and explain it as best I can, um, using as much as I can. But really, at the end of the day, the theory of this part is really where the, the, the key concepts come into it. Okay, and as I say, those we'll do some examples of. So the next we're going to look at is we're going to look at the terminology around magnetic fields.